when we have the human experience and we have our own individual journeys, we have a holistic approach in terms of who we are, um, how we show up, how we think, act and feel, and a load of other concepts and, and theories that can fold into this, but I can go into more detail if you need so. And when we look at ourselves as kind of this avatar and this being, then what we work out is that there are multiple elements to ourselves that make up the whole. So while we look at it from a holistic perspective, we break it down into smaller manageable chunks. And these four chunks that I've found personally work really effectively are you start with your spiritual essence or your spirit or the being that you are beyond all of like the conditioning, beyond all of your experiences and beyond all of like your trauma and your childhood. And this is the stage or the phase that we're looking to get back to from the perspective of doing all of our healing and going on our own personal journeys. So when we have that as the least dense element, because the spirit form is just the least dense, and then we move down through the next couple of stages, which then become the mental. So this is slightly less dense, but it's still thought forms and just thought patterns. And these are taught to us or we've learned behaviors around how we should think and how societal norms form and how it all kind of fits into place. So we have to start looking at the thought forms and thought process or the mindset and then we have to deconstruct this to work out, well, how much of this is how we would operate from a place of alignment? And how much of this is actually from a place of somebody else told us this and we use it as survival adaptation in order to fit in in the environment that we're within? And these will just be anything from like limiting beliefs or ways of thinking based on how we were taught the world works. And once we then get beyond this stage, you're then looking at going into the slightly more dense emotional side. And the emotional side is clearly where we have energy in motion. But this is all to do with the expression of feelings, not necessarily feelings themselves, because the feeling is internal, it's trapped within the body. And because it's trapped within the body, we have to find a way of expressing it. And the feeling is where the trauma is, but the trauma is not the event. The trauma is the unprocessed event. So if you have a loop whereby say you're in a classroom and you put your hand up and you ask a silly question, then somebody's gonna start laughing at you, but you're gonna learn that expressing yourself in that manner potentially is unsafe. So what then happens is you suppress that and you go within yourself, but you need a resource that's gonna basically come and give you that safety or allow you to complete that loop cycle. So if you're fortunate enough to have a teacher that says, right, class quiet and down, we're just going to answer this question. There's no such thing as a silly question. Then that allows you to sort of exhale and breathe. And what that does is that allows the nervous system then to fully process what you've been through. And that won't necessarily leave any lingering trauma for you to then potentially have to rediscover at a later date and then go back and heal. Whereas if we don't have that resource or that interaction, then what we get is we get that stuck loop and that stuck loop is where we react based on a past event that never fully completed itself so once we get beyond that stage we then get into the physical so the physical is anything manifest or anything that's tangible or you can touch so when it comes to that type of thing that could be anything from your physical environment whereby you have stuff in that environment that's not sustainable or not aligned with who you are, or you've created it for the wrong reasons. And what you'll find is these things slowly either build up if they're like a physical illness, or if you're in a place of dis-ease or disease, in which case you'll manifest the, the actual outside element in physical form. So if it's cancer, it's highly likely to be long-standing anger. That could then be ancestral but that could also be bloodline, it could be karmic, it could be unprocessed from uh, childhood, in which case inner child healing work might be required. And there's a load of other tangents and explanations that you can go off in, but the underlying root structure and the cause of it is then gonna give you a lot of information in terms of finding out the pieces of your own personal jigsaw and your own experiences, because no two people are the same and the environment 
will clearly have an impact based on your perception, your beliefs, and how you go out and interact with the world. So from that perspective, we then have to start working it backwards and go back up the chain. So if you had problems expressing yourself, you might have thyroid issues. If you have long-standing anger, it might be cancer or a leukemia type element. If you have SA in terms of trauma from childhood, you might then find that obviously you develop all of these conditions around like the ovaries if you're female or you might find it's the prostate if you're male and in, and you'll just have all these other subsequent experiences that then go off on that tangent to then give you the pieces to the clue to try and allow you to find who you were meant to be rather than who you've been conditioned to be so when we look at going back up we have to originally look at the signs and the symptoms that we've got. But rather than going to an outside force or an outside authority, we need to get ourselves to the position whereby we become that authority. And when we become that authority, we can then get ourselves into a position whereby we can start taking back our control. So when we take back that control, we then get to the position whereby we work it up we get into the body, we start feeling those feelings in order to express them as emotions. Then once we clear those emotions and therefore the feelings go, it leaves a void or a gap that we then fill with more joyful experiences that then reprogram how we're conditioned to show up in the world. We then go back to step further and then we start breaking all the mental constructs because you have to have the identity around who you're now becoming or who you now are. And then once we go beyond the mental side, we can then get back to the spirit or the essence of who we're meant to show up as. And once we regain that authenticity, then we can start getting ourselves into a position whereby we show up authentically. And that vibration is magnetic. And that will then allow us to attract experiences, people, circumstances, places to us from that place of alignment in order for us to then be able to have the experience that we'd like to have here rather than this heaven and hell or purgatory approach. So the idea overall is to go back through those four steps and then making sure that we're perfectly aligned. And then once we're perfectly aligned from those four stages, we then get to the position whereby we can then show up as we are, who we are, for the people that we're meant to be here for. And then we start teaching from that place. So hopefully that gives you a, a good insight as to how the process should work. If you've got any further questions, let me know. But as always, until next time, trust the process and it's bye for now.